Just a quick update on the Riley progress today. Um, it's a crappy day outside, it's raining. It's quite cold as well. So I've actually been in the garage and I've been working a bit more on these guards for the Austin. Oh, so it's not a it's not an update about the Riley at all, it's an update about the Austin. Um, anyway, the, the guards for the Austin 7, I really want to get all that sort of finished and since we're in this lockdown thing it's a good time to to really try and crack on and get a lot of this done especially all the things I can do where I don't need materials or I don't need to go out and buy things or get parts I've got everything I need here and one of those things is to finish smoothing off the guards and then make the stays for them so normally I take the stuff outside and hammer it out there on a on a panel stand but I was talking to Joss and he had a good idea which was instead of using a hammer and dolly make up one of these these stakes so basically I got a piece of 30 millimeter which is what inch and a quarter steel bar solid steel bar and I put a little bend in it uh, it's not a very regular bend it's 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 more of a sort of kink in the middle of the, the bar uh, turns out this stuff's quite hard to bend, so I tried heating it up with my oxyacetylene, which did work to some degree. I managed to get the, the middle bit red hot, but then when I was trying to bend it, I actually ended up cracking the the timbers on the top of my workbench here. There's now a big crack running all the way through here, which I'm going to have to fix up, so this isn't quite as secure as it used to be. Um, in the end, while it was still hot, I suddenly remembered, oh, you bought a 12-ton um, a shop press a few weeks ago so basically I used that I, I just put it on the press and, and bent it um, I do need to work on that press it's a little bit wobbly the the piece that slides up and down in the middle underneath the jack has clearance on either end so it can kind of wobble sideways which can be a little bit unsettling when you're putting a lot of pressure on something like this and it looks like it's gonna suddenly jump to the side so I'm gonna fix that with some some plastic blocks in the side or something to make it give it something to slide on and take up the slack but I got there in the end anyway I, I bent it and then I just MIG welded a, a steel tube thick wall steel tube to it and the idea is that this sits in the vise as I've got it and you you lift the guard up onto it so that sits over there and then I can basically hammer on this and to hammer it, I've been using the the um, the slapping thing, the spoon, I guess they call it. Is that a spoon? Uh, I can't remember exactly what that's called, but the, the metal thing you hit it with. Um, and you sort of hit it with sort of glancing blows, and that, that smooths it all off quite nicely. And this is now starting to come up reasonably well. It, it's never going to be perfect, because I'm kind of an amateur at this, and... Um, it's quite I find it quite hard going to get it really even but it, it's smooth but there are still little it's a little bit wavy in places and a little bit lumpy but it, it's definitely getting better and better all the time so I'll, I'll just keep going with that um, I've done one side and I still need to do the other side maybe we can see the difference put that down Oh, it's a bit it's a bit hard to see but this side I've only done by hand and I can I can feel when I run my hands along it that it's sort of it's sort of wavy um, this side isn't too bad now it's reasonably smooth so I need to turn it round and do the other side um, you can also see in the top where I was a bit rough with the English wheel and I've got little track marks all through it um, I can hammer some of that out but Eventually, this is going to be painted, so skim coat a primer and sand it all back. It should be should be fine. Um, the other thing that's quite interesting is is these things are really actually very strong. So it's only uh, I think I'm using one mil steel or 0.8 or one mil. I can't remember exactly what the steel is, but these are these are very very strong. I mean, you can you know I, I can stand on that. That's all my weight on it. And that's not even moving so it's, it's very rigid so I think they'll hold up really well on the car um, pretty much I just need to keep doing that hammering and filing 
getting them smooth, and then I can bolt them on. Um, so that's the Austin. There isn't much to say about the Riley apart from the fact that I cleaned up and painted the block. So that's um, again being painted with that sort of what do they call it? It's like a semi gloss engine enamel. Um, is this the stuff? Yeah, low gloss. Which I quite like. So I'm wondering about painting things like the the front axle and the um, the tie rods and, and things like that with it as well. It may be a nice sort of black finish for it. And it seems quite robust, quite hardy. So we'll see how that goes later on. One thing I can add about doing this, um, sometimes I'm finding I've got low spots where the panel kind of comes along and then goes in like that. That's very exaggerated, but you know, sort of wobbles in like this. So what I've been doing, there, there was one of those here. What I do to, to fix that is where it's low like that, the metal needs to be stretched, to pull it out. So I've been using the, the sandbag, sandbag and, the, and the mallet. And basically I put the panel onto the bag like that and then just hit the seam out uh, just to stretch the metal out and then I go back to the the dolly and the vise and just planish it all back down again and down. Um, that works fairly well it just it just removes any of those little wobbles I think there'll still be some but um, like I say you just keep literally bashing away at it and eventually it comes right. I think I'll get to a point where I, I basically run out of skill and that'll be as good as I can get it. But we'll see, I'll keep going. Theoretically I'm getting better as I get more practice. Um, the other thing is this, this stuff's really hard on your hands. So I've, I'm, I'm getting quite a blister there on my finger from the from holding that, that little slapping spoon thing. Um, this is why to unlock the Macintosh that that work gave me the the MacBook I have to I have to give it the middle finger salute um, because that fingerprint doesn't work anymore anyway I'll keep going well one last job I did um, which actually is for the Riley is I made up this little piece um, to go on the choke linkage on the carbs uh, that the the choke cable will eventually attach to um, it was just made out of a little piece of square section tube and I just sort of machined up a little piece to go in the end so the cable will have a like a ball end or something on it so you'll feed that through from this end and then this will give you the thing to um, for the choke levers to pull on this was all just steel and then I, I cleaned it up and then just um, zinc plated it hopefully that works reasonably well